Hello and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel in the first place. Today we have a Bakugo X listener. It's Crashing Blow by Frog Supremacy on AO3. The link will be in the description, and let's go ahead and get into it. Izuku had never not shown up. He was always there, with those bare teeth and determined eyes. In the scarred hands, clenched in fists, as he prepared to go down against whatever awaited him. That's what scared you the most about him. How willing he was to die. How many times you sat next to his bed as recovery girl's gentle hands ghosted over his broken bones. To check their healing, but mostly how reliable he was. How he was always, always there. But now he wasn't. And your throat was raw from crying his name into the desolate wind rushing through the hole gaping above you. The cold air left goosebumps on your exposed skin but only above the neck. You didn't even bother looking up. You couldn't. Cement pinned you in place. And God, it hurt. It hurt more than anything you'd ever felt. And you knew that if you reached for your chest, you'd feel something piercing right through you. What a cruel joke. And even though you wanted nothing more than to lock eyes with Bakugo, to make sure he was all right, to make sure you weren't alone, your head only swiveled far enough so that you could see a hand, just as big and mutilated as Azuku's, protruding from underneath a rock, mangled and bruised. You almost screamed. Pakago, it's too quiet. Your ragged breathing and heartbeat thundered in your ears as the darkness pressed further in. Echo, that was all you heard, and that's all you needed to break into sobs. Salty tears streaking lines down the combination of sweat and dirt on your face. Any moment now, Izuku would shoot down the hole at the top of the building, like a fallen angel, his gaze lit with a green lightning, and save you and Bakugo from this hell, this silent, blood-stained hell, where the moon calmly watched through a shattered window. Bakugo, please, you whispered, your voice shaking. Just answer me. Please. A groan of pain, slight clattering, like a few pieces, broke off the debris littering the room, a sizzle, like he had tried to start an explosion, and failed. Your blood ran cold, colder than the air, colder than Bakugo's words. I can't use my quirk. His voice was quiet, so quiet much quieter than he had ever been, in strife with an emotion you couldn't place. Even so, it wasn't as rattling as when the sky fell, and fire boomed into the air like a deadly flower. With Bakugo's arms stretching out to you, and his face full of panic and fear, emotions you never thought you'd see on his face, emotions you thought Bakugo wasn't able to feel, you had wondered why he hadn't blasted out of there, and his words, along with that twisted, bloody hand under a rock, answered your unsaid question. I, I think something hit me. It sounded stupid, but you wanted Bakugo to keep talking, wanted to know that he was here, and breathing. It hurts. I know. Bakugo, where's Izuku? He choked out every syllable snaring on the grooves and curves of your mouth. He, he should be here. He said he'd always show up. It's harder to talk now, in your half-hysterical thoughts of messy green hair, and freckles that dot smooth cheeks like stars saturating your mind like moonlight is now saturating the room. Even with it, you can't see Bakugo. But you could see the small puddle of blood seeping out from under a large chunk of steel and cement, and you bit your lip to stop from crying out. Do you remember our first year? You did, watching a spiky-haired blonde with his feet up on another girl's desk, and a green-haired boy with a fragile smile lock eyes across the room, offering Izuku your lunch when he forgot his, blushing when he accepted with a wide grin, Coughing up ash in the burning city at USJ, standing in front of the cameras during final exams, 
witnessing All Might's impossibly large hand swallow up Akaga's face. The only thing in sight, his glazing vermilion eyes, promising that he'd never go down. You hung on to Deku like a leech. I thought you were just another damn extra. I probably was. Still am. You were just a damn extra, resorted to vulnerability, surrounded by darkness and the cold. No. There was a long pause. Too long. Bakugo? No answer. Katsuki? He never let you call him by his first name. You were so strong. Just like him. Just like that damn nerd. Bakugo's voice was just above a whisper. Barely audible. No wonder you liked him. Like him. He immediately corrected himself. The cold didn't even let the blush rise to your cheeks. N no, that's not it. He was my first friend. He was my friend, too. I never looked at him like that. It was so quiet. Like what? You asked unsteadily, even though you knew the answer. Bakugo took in a shuddering breath, and you could hear his winds. Like he'd always be there to save you. What a cruel joke. You know what? That's not even funny, you absolute piece of shit. It's not a joke, damn it. Do you know how long I've wanted you to look at me like that? His voice was rough, angry, and it was like they were first years again. Arguing, tears rising to your eyes, and him stomping off. It was Bakugo. And for a moment, he felt like you weren't even there, pierced right through, and surrounded by darkness and cold. How many times I've tried to help you, impress you, show you that I can save you too? I finally realized this year, Izuku will always be better, he's always there, and I never fucking am. Oh, you're dizzy. All those times he pushed you further than you thought you could go. Every time he had your back. How long you cried when you realized he was kidnapped by the League of Villains after walking behind you at the training camp. You're here now, Kotsky. It's quiet. Utterly too quiet. Kotsky? Bakugo had always been there, with those spared teeth and determined eyes, and the scarred hands clenched into fists as he prepared to go against whatever awaited him. But he wasn't here now, and the sounds of his breath were all gone, and all you could do was stare numbly at the moon, your sobs echoing through the room. How could Izuku not be there? He was always there. After all, Izuku had never not shown up. Alright, that's the end of this one. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye!